This video will discuss computing the moment of inertia tensor of a molecule from its XYZ coordinate. So in our previous video on center of mass, we discussed how the zeroth moment of mass, a scalar value, is the total mass, which is the sum of the masses of all the individual atoms. We have the first moment of mass, which is a vector. That's the center of mass, which is the point in 3D space where the uh, molecule would be balanced uh, on all sides. And we have the second moment of mass, which is the moment of inertia, which is a matrix or a rank two tensor. So this video is about the moment of inertia tensor. So the total mass is indicative of the molecule's resistance to linear acceleration. If we apply some force to the molecule, it'll, its force and acceleration are related through the total mass. Alternatively, if we apply some torque to it, or some uh, rotational force, the amount of angular acceleration we get, the relationship between those two, those are related through the moment of inertia. So for an object in three dimensions, which has some type of globular shape to it, it's spread out, it's not just a single point particle, we represent the moment of inertia in this type of three by three matrix here. So um, what we have for each of the elements is you have a unit of mass times distance squared. Because moment of inertia is kind of represented by how heavy is the object times the square of how far it is away from our axis of rotation. So we have two different sets of rules here. We have the diagonal elements, I, X, X, Y, Y, and Z, Z. And then we have our off diagonal elements, I, X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z, and their uh, complements on the other side. So for our diagonal elements, we take a sum over all the atoms of the atom's mass times its distance from that axis. So distance from the x-axis, or distance squared from the x-axis would be y-coordinate squared plus z-coordinate squared. Distance squared from the y-axis would be z plus x each squared, and distance from z-axis x squared plus y squared. All of those get multiplied by the mass of the object, uh, which typically we'll be representing in atomic mass units and distances in angstroms. And then add that over, sum that up over all atoms, and we get our diagonal elements. So that's kind of effectively how much, uh, how much resistance to angular acceleration we have around each of those pure axes. But additionally, we have these off diagonal elements here. So we have I X Y, which is equal to I Y X. This is going to be a symmetric matrix. So all of the off diagonal elements are equal to their complements on the other side of the diagonal. So I X Y is equal to negative sum over all the atoms of mass times X coordinate times Y coordinate. So this time it isn't some other set of coordinates. It's the coordinates of the two indices that we've indicated in our off diagonal element. And the corresponding uh, values hold for XZ and for YZ as well. So that gives us a symmetric real three by three matrix for our moment of inertia tensor overall. Uh, we can demo some of this uh, from my GitHub computational chemistry repository as we've been doing throughout this entire chapter. There's a program in there called moment of inertia which is going to compute some extra things about moment of inertia. If I've got that in open in my Jupyter notebook here. I have print moment of inertia function in there. Um, what else is going to be new? I've got to compute that somewhere. So there's the coordinate squared plus coordinate squared, the off diagonal elements there bunch of other stuff and then just adding to the main block some new printing. All right, so inside the notebook that we've been using throughout this entire chapter in the top directory slash notebooks, geometry analysis.ipython, again, without any arguments, gives you the usage. I need to feed this an XYZ file as an input argument. So up one directory, tab, geom, tab, XYZ, tab, why don't we commute, uh, compute the moment of inertia of benzene? Why not? Uh, Shift-Enter. 
Now we're just adding to the program we've been uh, working with thus far in this chapter. Uh, XYZ coordinates repeated, 12 bond lengths, 18 bond angles, 24 torsions, 18 out of plane angles. Center of mass, translate the, mole, uh, translate the atoms to the center of mass. And then we compute the moment of inertia tensor around that center of mass which gives us these values here. So notice we do have it um, symmetric with respect to the off diagonal elements. And we have our X, Y, and Z diagonal elements that we've computed there. So we're gonna take this forward in the next video, show what you can actually do with this and what the structure of this matrix implies about uh, some of the properties of your molecule.